The following teaching is taken from the book, The 40-Day Warfare Plan of Binding and Loosing, by Daniel and Sheila Brothers. To download a free copy of this audiobook, go to godsounds.com. Chapter 2 40-Day Revelation and Lists California Letter This problem was perplexing and oppressing until July of 1993. I listened to a local pastor read a letter that he received from his pastor friend in California. The California pastor told how one day he and his wife were having their separate quiet times on a secluded beach when a huge swarm of flies came upon them in such mass that it really startled them both. Knowing that Satan is Beelzebub, Lord of the Flies, he searched the library for information on flies in order to enlighten their experience. The fact he found most interesting was that to exterminate flies from an area, you must disinfect it daily for 40 days. He realized that Satan was a short-term fighter and that if we can resist him and his foe for forty days, then he will have to leave us for a time, just like he did Jesus in the wilderness. Luke 4, verse 1 Bells and whistles went off in my head. I knew that this was the answer for the people in my world that I'm responsible for. You see, I already knew that I wasn't responsible for the whole world, but I was responsible for the world around me that I revolved in on a daily basis first, then the world at large. You see, I believe that we, like King David, have been chosen to cover in prayer and warfare any and all people that the Lord has put into our care for protection. If we are found to be an irresponsible hireling instead of a loving shepherd over our flocks when he returns, then heads will roll up yonder, probably ours, John 10, verse 13. If you are truly born again, then you have a flock to pray over and care for. If you laugh about caring for others, then you probably have a spirit of indifference, which steals, kills, and destroys love and compassion, which in turn makes us all just a self-centered tinkling sound, good for nothing for Christ's purposes. It is possible to become so heavenly-minded in seeking the things of God in self-gratification and self-righteousness that we will become of no earthly good. The Pharisees, like Paul before his true conversion, were heavenly-minded but of no earthly good because they did not care about man's needs. Jesus showed them the way, the truth, and the life through practical example but they couldn't see through the glass darkly because of their blinders of pride and self-centeredness. We must humble ourselves, pick up our cross of Christ's purposes, and do the works of Him who sent us. If not, then can we truly say that we love Jesus as our Savior and our Lord? Do not let the enemy accuse you even at this very moment with feelings of failure and disappointment. Get mad. Get mad. Get mad at the way these bullies have been pushing you around. The Holy Spirit will convict you if you are mature enough to hear it, but He will not accuse you as worthless. You are not worthless. You are heaven's only hope of setting the captives free by starting today. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Yes, amen. Anyway, back to my story. I got off on a rabbit trail there. Revelation and List Number 1 List of People After I stopped spinning around with Revelation about the 40-day extermination plan, I came up with two lists. One list had all the names of people I could think of. I let each person's name be the source of contact for the whole family instead of trying to get every name. I'm believing that ten generations on both sides of each person's name will be touched through warfare prayer, even their spouse and their bloodline, back to ten generations, even their ex-spouses, since they had a soul tie with them, 
Acts 16, verse 31. Acts 11, verse 14. Deuteronomy 23, verse 3. This may seem like a lot of people represented by one name in a family, but I'm not going to be found guilty for not believing God for the impossible. If we think it probable, God will make it possible. I questioned God one day if this was crazy, and could I really let one name represent so many people like a tribe? The instant thought that came to me was, wasn't I able to choose the firstborn of all the Egyptians and their livestock? Exodus 11 verse 5 I was then done with the spirits of doubt and unbelief accusing me about God's inability. Spirits only have to get us to doubt God, not make us believe it. Doubt will open the door wide enough for unbelief to come in, then confusion, then depression, and then hopelessness comes in and opens the door wider for frustration to take root, thus making a seed bed for murmuring and complaining to spring forth and cause ourselves to be turned over to the tormentor for correction, for the saving of our souls. Praising the Lord in all things is more for our protection and prevention from opening the wrong doors than it is just to flatter God. Doors once opened can also become shut again as we backtrack and repent and bind them shut by rebuking them in Jesus' name and covering them with His blood. Spirits hate each other, but they will work together in order to control their victims. Their ultimate goal is not only to cause us to be a laughingstock in the face of God, but to make us lose heart in God's Word to the point of despair, opening up opportunities for death and suicide to manifest themselves into actions of self-murder, where there is no forgiveness after the fact. They know that they are destined for hell, and they want to take us with them, while preventing us from helping others find the way. They are succeeding in many, but we have the authority in Christ to say, No more devils. Loose my people in Jesus' name. We must work together in order to loose them into freedom of life and life more abundantly. He is more than able to carry our faith, no matter how big or small it may be. Matthew 17, verse 20. Mustard Seed Faith Part 1. Clarification of the Three Parts The Four Lists and Their Procedures Are Coming Up Soon List Number 2. Warfare List, Demons and Commands This is the first part of 40-Day Warfare. My number two list was made up of every kind of demonic spirit I could think of. You see, I believe that if it is not of the Holy Spirit, than it is of another spirit. So, I listed spirits of emotions, mental, sexual, abusive, curses, false religions, sickness, temptations, and many more that are listed in the following pages. It came up to many pages of demons, along with scriptures and commands of warfare authority. Six days a week, Monday through Saturday, I would read my list out loud, which took about 20 minutes, about 45 minutes now. Mornings seemed best because of binding demons for the day, and mornings have fewer distractions, which hinder all serious closet prayer times. Sometimes it was delayed and started as late as 11.59 p.m., but I always started it before midnight. Since nobody was agreeing with me in this, I made a pact that I would start all over again if I missed one day during a 40-day siege against the enemy's strongholds. I only called out the list of demons and commands for six days a week, Monday to Saturday. On Sunday, I would rest from warfare and read off my praise and thanksgiving list, list number three, and call out the names on my people list. Not praying individually for them, unless the Lord quickens someone. I just called them out to the Lord, like lifting them up as an offering to Him to have His way in their lives. It would usually take about 20 to 30 minutes, 
also depending on how many people I had listed. I found, as you will, that more people were added to my number one list as well as demons were to my number two list. That is six days of warfare, one day of praise, repeated each week for a total of 40 consecutive days. My number three list for Sunday's praise and thanksgiving was and is just a heartfelt gratitude for God's power of deliverance, along with some proxy prayers for those who may not be able to pray for themselves yet. Demons under every bush? If you hear a voice that says to you, you must not give too much attention to the devil and look for demons behind every bush, ask yourself, is that the Holy Spirit that sounds scared? I don't think so. You see, scriptures say that we are to be as gentle as a dove, keep your peace, but wise as a serpent. Matthew 10 verse 16. That means that we should be as smart as he is and know his plans so we can foul them. Besides, Jesus himself commanded the disciples to preach, to cast out, and to heal. That was his focus of attention, and that better be ours as well. Mark 16, verse 17. Wars in the natural are examples of how we should war in the spirit. Knowing our enemy plans and our weapons will always help us win battles and set the captives free. I would not want to be in a foxhole with a soldier that was not intent on searching the bushes for the enemy, and so it is in the spirit. Give me a troop of believers with eyes wide open and watch the enemy forces flee. The Lord can work through those who truly see and stay awake but the only hope for the sleeper is repentance from dead works in Christ. David ruled forty years over the natural. I was also doing these forty days like King David ruled for forty years. He ruled over the natural, but we must rule over the spiritual. He was both a man of God and of war, so must we, but only against the powers of darkness. Part 2 List number three, 40 days of praise and thanksgiving. After I did the first 40 days, I asked the Lord, what should I do next? My thoughts turned to how Solomon reigned 40 years in praise and peace while blessing the people that he was responsible for. So, I started another 40 days of reading out loud my number three praise and proxy list on the six days and just calling out the people's names, list number one, on Sunday. This went along just fine until I got to the end of those 40 days. Part number three. No list. 40 days of hands off. Do nothing. Lord, what now? The more I meditated on it, the more I realized that after Solomon's reign, the kingdom split up. Two tribes went with the king of Judah, while ten tribes went with the king of Israel. 2 Chronicles 11 verse 1 It was a kind of, let them go and see what they do. So, I called it a time of hands off. Forty days of doing nothing, but wait, watch, and see what happens to the people on my lists. It's a time to let go and see what truth is established in each person while resting in faith that the Lord is doing a deeper work inside by letting junk come to the surface and being exposed. Make notes of what is manifesting in people's lives during this time, so that these spirits can be beat on during the next round of binding and loosing. Forty days of warfare, forty days of praise, forty days of hands off, total of one hundred and twenty days, which equals one round. List number four. Spoils list. During this whole time of 120 days, I had another list, which I called my praise report list, or spoils list. It was a record of any kind of report I received about anyone on my list 
good or bad. During the first 40 days, the reports were, and usually will be, bad things happening because of the battle of deliverance, similar to that of Moses and Pharaoh. I need to find a theologian that can tell me how many days Moses wrestled with Pharaoh. I would not be surprised if it was 40 days. Moses interceded. I know one reason why God called Moses. It was because he probably prayed and interceded for Israel all those 40 years in the desert. His failed attempt greatly enhanced his groaning for his forgiveness and for their deliverance. Now that was some serious intercession for sure. Moses spent 40 years in the wilderness, and Christ spent 40 days in the wilderness. Surely we can call out 40 days in intercession of binding and loosing for the blind, deaf, wretched, lost, dying, and poor in spirit. 120 days times 3 times a year equals 360 days equals 3 rounds. The amazing thing that I realized was that I could do this 120-day warfare plan three times in a year with five days left over. But what was I to do with those five days, Lord? Oh yes, one day goes between each block of 120 days, which uses up three days. And I guess the last two days will be for Christmas and Easter, which won't be included in the 40 days. So. There you have it, three 120-day periods with five spaced-out days of rest. A page of detailed dates are following. This plan is not a law. Above all, believe this, this plan of mine is not a law that must be followed to the letter. It's just one battle plan of many that I believe the Lord wants to use to set His people free. If days are missed, just say, Grace, grace, in Jesus' name, and go on with it, especially when others are doing this list with us at the same time. We will be holding up each other's arms as they did for Moses. When you tire out, just sit on the rock and let others hold you up. Exodus 17 verse 12 This is just a battle plan to start an attack with you can add to it or take away from it. It's just a start, and that is all we need. We have to start somewhere, so why not here and now? Specific dates are assigned. You can do this anytime you desire, but I've listed specific days that will be continually used from this day forward so that partners around the world that wish to join forces can all start together and be in one accord. Wow, around the world. Wow, and wow again. Can you imagine people all around the world binding and loosing in warfare intercession, all of us being of one mind and one joint action to the pulling down of strongholds over people's lives? That's an amazing thought. You represent them and they represent you. It's kind of like a giant pen pal prayer group. Wow. You see, I'm basing this whole battle plan on two verses. Matthew 18, verses 18 to 19, where two or more are gathered together and agree on anything in Jesus' name, they will receive it. And whatever we bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever we loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. There are many more scriptures for my faith in this battle plan, but these are the two main ones that I stake everything on. You will be on many lists. It is hard to imagine how much power God will generate when we join together in corporate prayer of binding and loosing. The greatest blessing for those who do this plan on the assigned day listed will have everyone warring for them each day as well. The plan covers not only you and your list of people, but also covers the lists of your prayer partners around the world. People will be covering you in a greater way 
than you ever could all by yourself. That is the point. Pray for others as more important than yourself and see God bless you more and more without having to pray so hard for yourself. We get covered by covering others. We reap more than we sow. What a deal. Lives will shake. I have found in the past that things start shaking in the lives of those on my list, but that is good. It is wrestling with principalities and powers of darkness that makes things shake. These reports will encourage you to go full steam ahead because you will be seeing the power of warfare intercession at work. It will put a hope in your soul and a joy of expectancy in your attitude of increased faith. You do not have to tell anyone what you are doing over them unless they need the hope of breaking through and seeing the light at the end of the tunnel. Spoils List Number 4 Your spoils list are the same as when King David and the other kings went to war and won the battles. They got the goodies left behind by the enemy. 1 Chronicles 26, verse 27, and 2 Chronicles 20, verse 25. In our case, the spoils will be the happiness here and the eternal rewards of those lost souls getting free from Satan's deception and receiving the light of Christ's salvation. Not only does this work on lost souls, but many believers will get free from their entanglements that hold them bound. Freedom to see Freedom is the purpose for the charge into the enemy camp. Freedom was, and still is, the heart of Christ for us all. We must work with our Lord while there is still daylight for the harvest. Matthew 9, verses 37 to 38 Oh, children of the light who say they see, please help me set the captives free. The Help Us Fight Prayer Will we say, Yes, Lord, we hear you calling us to pick up our cross and bear your arms. It was you who drafted us. We didn't choose you. It was you who chose us. Since you drafted us, Lord, we know that you will train us up in higher ways than our own, and you will lead us as we march with you in one accord. We war not with flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers that you overcame for us. So, now we must fight the good fight that you fought against demonic powers with your name and your blood in order to loose those who cannot see. It is only your might and power that will bring freedom. And it is you and us that we count on for these victories. It's our willingness to follow and your strength to lead us while keeping us in all your ways. Anoint us, empower us, O oh Lord, please. Thank you for listening. To download the entire audiobook, The 40-Day Warfare Plan of Binding and Loosing by Daniel and Sheila Brothers, go to godsounds.com. You may also purchase a copy of this audiobook through Audible, iTunes, Amazon, or one of many other audiobook distributors.